So, hello everybody. Hello. Welcome to our session today. Apologies for the late start. I had a little bit of a music glitch, uh, which was very fun, but I see that gave all of us a little bit more time to answer the icebreaker. What is your favorite way to use GPT in real life? We've got some interesting ideas resumes, cover letters, speed learn new topics. That's interesting, Josh. Jasmine okay. says getting insights and suggestions on documentation, answering emails. I do love that. Please help me draft an email to my boss. Um, that sounds like XYZ understand code. Ooh, that's a good one. Translate this code into plain English. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, we kicked off a little bit late today, so I will not talk very much, but just dive in. Everybody, will you please give a warm, warm, warm welcome to our coach, Gabby. This is Gabby's first time with us today. So super excited to have you here. Could you introduce yourself and share with us the answer to today's icebreaker for you of what is your favorite way to use GPT? So hi, my name is Gabby Caballero. I'm the lead Salesforce enablement program manager at a company called UKG. That stands for Ultimate Kronos Group. We're a big global enterprise HR software as a service company. We compete with Workday and ADP and those guys. And I've been doing a lot. I've been a, an AI enthusiast and a Salesforce uh, guru since like way back. So I, I'm so excited to be here and be able to share with you. And then also I'm glad Coach Janine has joined us as well. And my favorite part of using um, AI is I have a creative side, so I really love using it for creating marketing. So I love using it for image generation and uh, marketing collateral and things like that. Right on. Do you use a uh, mid journey? I use, I've been using Canva a lot and Canva just rolled out a bunch of their AI features and I'm in love with that. Okay. Cool, cool. I'll have to check it out. Probably a little bit easier to use than Mid Journey, but yeah. <laughs> you know, awesome, awesome. And of course, we've got Janine here as well. Y'all all know Janine, but I uh, want to introduce yourself, Janine, and share with us the answer to today's icebreaker for you. Uh, I what don't I use it for? I, I'm getting ready to use it to give me a list of all of the uh, count, uh, all of the cities in the bay area and what they uh, what the cost of the business license and short term rental permits are for because i'm going to a meeting tonight about that so like anything where i need to put together a lot of information and organize it really easily so but like all of the things you've mentioned i use midjourney dolly I use gamma for presentations i don't know that i realized canva had finally caught up and added that functionality so i'll have to play with that a little bit too yeah, so I use it for all the things. So It is pretty Great. wonderful. And today, we are going to be using it to generate and refine user stories, which is going to be wonderful. Here is the agenda for the day. I'll refresh us on the scenario and the task and send over that uh, interview transcript that you are going to need in order to draft those user stories. We'll have a discussion on the topic and then we will move into live feedback. This is the chance for you to share your work, ask questions, or join the stage to work through things. Um, I'll give you more details on exactly what you'll be presenting today here in a second. And then of course, Q&A and discussion. As we go throughout, you can feel free to ask your questions in that Q&A box and we will um, allocate some time at the end to answer those. Here I clicked, as a reminder, everyone, this is what we are all about. We are about learning from each other. We are about learning from each other in a safe environment. This is a safe space to try something out, see what happens, and then get feedback so that you can improve your skill set um, on your way to either landing your job or if you've already you know, landed your first job in the ecosystem, just up leveling and, and learning how to, to, to have more fun with AI, frankly. And then having fun, we don't know what is going to happen here today. It is completely unwritten and off script, which is what makes it always so magnificent. So join in the fun and be an active participant today. 
And you can interact in this session by raising your hand, getting live feedback, or working through the challenge. You may raise your hand at any time if you are ready to present your user stories. That helps me to know that we've got people that are ready to go and tailor our coach discussion accordingly. You can also use the chat, you can ask questions live, or you can use the Q&A box. There are, let's see, 70 people in this session today, and I'm sure we'll have more coming in as we go along. So let's make this really interactive and get out of this experience what we came for by participating and, and, and being involved in our own learning journey. All right, here is the scenario for today. You have been hired to come in as a business analyst specializing in AI for Arizona State University. Up until this point, ASU used forms and Google Sheets to manage course enrollment, and they recently hired your team to adjust their system to begin using Salesforce to manage course enrollment, as there has been an increase in demand for expanded course offerings. You will be working with Devine Grohl, Director of Analytics, to complete the project. In the Clicked Experience page, there was a link to interview notes as well as a live interview. If you did not already watch those, I highly recommend going back after the session to watch those interviews. Uh, this one was conducted by Vanessa Grant maybe six or seven months ago. It's a fabulous interview, and it'll really help you to get a firmer grasp on uh, how to tell if your user stories are good or not based on the actual interview. And everyone, here is the interview transcript that you will use as your input to AI for creating user stories. Here is the task. You will leverage GPT to aid in generating and refining user stories, ensuring that they're well-structured and meet the invest criteria. Invest means independent, negotiable, valuable, estimable, small, testable. Use GPT to assist in the creation and refinement process. This challenge will enhance your skills in both user story creation and the application of AI tools in a professional context. You can use ChatGPT, Bard, Gemini, Claude, or any other one that is new because they're always coming out with more. It really doesn't matter which one as long as you create those user stories. So here's what you're gonna do. First off is start by crafting your prompt. The end result should be a list of five user stories based off this transcript. So you're gonna first write your prompt and consider exactly what steps you'd like the GPT in order to craft the user stories that meet the invest criteria and follow this format as a who, I want what, so that why generate the user stories and have a conversation with the GPT until you are satisfied with the end result. Hint, everybody. Everything that I have read up to this point is excellent content for your prompt. There's lots of instructions in here that can help you to write a prompt that is not just analyze this transcript and write me five user stories. I can guarantee you that you will get some interesting user stories if that is all of the information that you put in your prompt. All right, after you generate the user stories, you're going to draft acceptance criteria. And acceptance criteria are conditions that you that must be met for the feature or user story to be accepted. Use the given when then framework and remember everyone, what are acceptance criteria not? I know some of you know the answer to that. Acceptance criteria are not what? Put it in the chat. I'm going to leave that there and, and come back to it. And then after that, everyone double check your work. GPTs are our assistants, but they are not immune to errors or hallucinations. In the session today, what we want to see is three things. Your prompt, one user story along with its acceptance criteria, and an explanation of how you double checked your work. Yay, everybody, you got it. Danella says solutions, Lashana says test steps, also not that. Solutions, not solutions, not solutions. This is not create an automated workflow that does X, Y, Z. I don't wanna hear anything that belongs in the setup menu. <laughs> okay, yeah. with that, let's get started. We are gonna have a 
coach discussion on the topic. We will start presentations in about 15 minutes. So you can kind of listen to us in the background or you can turn us off all together and focus on the task as we have this discussion um, at about 1230 Mountain Time. So, you know, 15 minutes, we will, we will come back and, and do some presentations. So first off, let's talk about prompt engineering. Here at Clicked, we've done lots and lots and lots of experiences on user stories, but let's start with prompt engineering. Gabby, can you explain the components of a good prompt? How do we actually go about writing it? Well, I think to have a good prompt, you have to be as specific as possible, right? So you, you want to ask the chat um, or you want to ask ChatGPT or Gemini or whatever Gen AI you're using of choice, but you want to make sure you're being as specific as possible that you're, you know, using contextual examples if you can. Um, you also want to make sure that you're letting it know like what tone you want it to, to have, if you want it, you know, to give you like from a certain pers uh, perspective or persona, want to make sure you include stuff like that. Um, so I think that a lot of people just think you can copy and paste and that's going to give you a good um, output. But I think you need to work a little bit more on refining, like what you put in is, is what, you know, as same thing with Salesforce, what you put in is what you get out, right? So I don't awesome. know, Coach, do you have anything to add to that or? Sorry, what was the question? Oh, I was yeah. entering in the chat. So oh, I was I was summarizing the golden nuggets as well. Uh, it sounds like, correct me if I'm wrong, context, prompt or uh, persona and task. Those are those are the three things that we should include. Yeah, I think so. OK, yeah. And then she she passed it over to you, Janine. What are, what are the most important components of, of, a, of a quality prompt? Um, yeah, I. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to disagree with what she said about that. I, I mean, really, again, really making sure that you are being specific, but the refinement part, the you you even mentioned it here, chat GPT is a chat process. So refine what you get back. You don't have to be satisfied with the first answer. You can also start over again. So feel free to ask it to redo it or give it a thumbs down and say you didn't like the answer. Uh, but make sure that you are asking it very specifically for what you want and making sure that it's not spending too much time talking about its own process. So you've got to get really specific and you've got to tell it exactly what you're looking for and, and what the limitations are. Tell it exactly what you're looking for. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Giving it those guardrails, telling it what not to do, because it really does love to talk and be helpful and give all of the information yeah. that it can possibly find. And sometimes it's just too much. So you got to you got to rein it in a little bit. All right. Well, we, we've got hands raised. So I'm going to bring Dado up here to uh, to present. Uh, Janine, Gabby, did, did y'all have anything else to add before we jump into presentations? Well, no. we could probably work those things in as we see the what we're seeing and probably work awesome. in some of that additional tips and tricks. Sounds good. Everyone, can we welcome Dadamar to the stage today? Good morning. Damn, damn yeah, morning. hi, hi. Actually, uh, Actually, my name is uh, Dam uh, Damodar. So I was Damodar. Damodar. Okay. Did you used to go by Damo, or did you? Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you all, you always call me Demo. Yeah. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm not sure why I changed to um, my full name, Damodar. Okay. So uh, I just you. So this is my first time I use Chat GPT to populate. Okay user stories and acceptance criteria and i was really happy to use that so i followed the instruction as it is which was mentioned in the inter i mean in the youtube videos so and the notes so i am just presenting the five user story although i am not so much uh like because I believe that user stories are more towards when I write on my own because I put my feelings on it then. So I just quickly read it out. So as a curriculum manager, I want to view real time enrollment matrix so that I can monitor course registration 
given uh, I go to curriculum dashboard, I see enrollment matrix, and then I should see data for online hybrid and in-person courses. So I should uh, read it out, or how does it, should I go? So what, what, what we can do, uh, we want to see one user story, and then could you pull up your prompt? What we want to yeah. see is the prompt and, and the conversation that you had with GPT as well. Okay, uh, I can, of course. So I used this prompt, okay. So this was prompt one I used. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I open, I just quickly move my GPT here. One second. Um, actually, I'm just attending this for the first time this session. So I really didn't know what the prerequisite. So I've just just a second yeah so are you able to see my gpt yes okay so what i did was yeah so write a prompt as a prompt engineer for open ai's chat gpt where based on the above requirement from the interview script uh, like I attached the inter interview script, transcript, graph to user stories that meet invest criteria and in the format as a user, I want this so that this task should be done. And also write acceptance criteria that must meet for the user story to be accepted. So this is after I uh, asked the GPT to uh, give me a brief summary of the interview notes. This was the first prompt. So as a prompt engineer or GPT, uh, allow extract the following information, review the interview transcript to gain overview of the project, pay special attention to stakeholder needs, information most important, current state, KPI information, pain points, and current Salesforce features used. and it generated the prompt first and it i read it throughout and it was it was really fine for me it was really good in fact so prompt was fine and then uh, i just read it out the overall response this was the prompt and this was the response so this was all this was all matching the whole interview because I listened to the whole YouTube video. So this was fine. Then this was the user stories. Although I was not so much fascinated with the user stories. Okay. Uh, because <laughs> again, like I've been using it through by my writing my by myself. So, mm -hmm. so just wanted your feedback. Like, is this the one which is fine or? Uh, well, I mean, I think there's no right answer. I think that, you know, you can get creative with this, but I'm just wondering. So I like that you, you know, said, you know, write it as a prompt engineer would. But so what I wonder is um, the human aspect, right? So what is it that you didn't like about the responses that it gave you? It, did it, was it out of context? Did it? Um... Yeah. So uh, see, like if I, because I have developed the dashboard by myself. So like if a curriculum manager comes to me for building a dashboard, so I would have write as a curriculum manager, I want to uh, see the dashboard. I will be writing the similar only, but with a human touch. So I uh, maybe similar only, I would write it. I, I can't find any, uh, not anything bad about it. It's really good. Just like it's my first time, so I will be getting used to it. Okay. Janine, do you have, I'm going to defer to Coach Janine on analyzing the actual user story. So I'm just trying to kind of wrap yeah, my I, Sure. I mean, I think it's a, and it's a totally fair approach to say, here's the thing I want to do. How would you write a prompt for this? But what you have to remember is at the end game here, is we're acting as business analysts, yeah. not as prompt engineers. And so what you want to do is you want to say, as a, pro as, a, as a business analyst, 
how would you write a prompt so that I can analyze this transcript and generate user stories, right? So you could ask it to write you a prompt, but your, your end goal isn't to get it to act like a prompt engineer. Your end goal is to get it to act like a business analyst. Is that true? Right. Correct. What we're trying Not to do is generate yeah. user stories. And so, and, and we wanted to analyze the transcript, but we don't just want to analyze the transcript as a random person. We wanted to analyze the transcript as a business analyst, and we wanted to extract certain things from it per our instructions or per being a business analyst. So as a business analyst, how would you generate a prompt so that I could best extract the user stories from this using the invest criteria? And then you could give it however much detail you want, and then it might give you a prompt. The next thing you do is feed it back the prompt. Great. Now, as a business analyst, um, please analyze the transcript because now you've told it, please write me a prompt to do the thing. Now do the thing. You know, please analyze this transcript given this prompt and generate the output user stories in this format. Got right. Correct. So that would be that would be the series of steps you'd have to use. So, so that when you, you come up with your set of user stories, you you yeah. know, when I was not satisfied with the answer, so what I did was I just quickly show you. So I just write, I am not convinced with these user stories. Prepare again, keep yourself in the position oh, of sales analyst. Right. <laughs> and what did well, you like the output of the so those were that was my question too from the beginning. I was, now, like, I was wondering why you and now you're getting to... user stories, right? Because you weren't getting user stories before. Yeah. So the thing is, I am like, again, uh, that's why I'm very much keen to learn about this because it will save my time. It will give me a view, which sometimes I may skip writing user stories. So ex example, for example, if I say like, I will never write as a finance officer, I will write maybe some like as a, from a, from a finance team, finance team rep, I want to track invoice payment in the dashboard. I want, I would write something like I want to see financial metrics, like uh, how many students have paid the uh, invoices. I would not, I would just reframe this if I would have written this, like as a finance rep, I would like to see financial well, metrics. Well, well why? Hmm, why, why? Why would you have reframed it? Is it because you think it's more specific or? Because I want currently, uh, I want to see the financial metrics in the dashboard. That's why I want to write that thing. But financial metrics in a dashboard is a solution. Yeah. Okay. Solution. And, and, and I mean, but like, but like, that's also different from invoice payments. So, yeah. so like those are two different stories. So yeah, I mean, Got right. It. So I, I mean, right. I mean, so neither one is necessarily right or wrong, but I mean, financial metrics in a dashboard. Okay. Is, I, like, I, so I mean, like, if we go to the persona, like, let's pick thing one thing at a time. As a, is the problem yeah. with finance officer or is the problem with finance versus finance team? Like, what are you what what are you getting at? I, I am understanding. Yeah, I got it. Okay. So this is this is fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now, actually, I, I actually have a pro I actually have a problem with the one that it wrote because if you go if you scroll back up to it, because yeah. it says I want to track invoice payments in Salesforce. That's a solution. I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't I don't agree with that because I would say as a finance officer I want to track invoice payments. End of story. Because Salesforce, by stating in Salesforce, I think that's a solution. And so a true user story would say I want to just track invoice payments because maybe Salesforce because sell a Salesforce doesn't necessarily track invoice payments. So that may not be the right choice. Right. And that's because he told it, it was, that he was a Salesforce business analyst, right? Is that why it extracted that? Uh, but, yeah. Right. So, I think yeah, so that, that's the refinement but, process, right? Yeah. Right. Going but, back but, and but, it. Right. And again, remember, like in real life, right, we may be saying copy paste the user stories that the GPT gives you here. In real life, that's it's, it's never good, right? You're gonna have to refine it yourself. Right, that's why you need you to rewrite it to to, to review and refine and and say, okay, well, 
cut this out and maybe refine, you know, keep fine tuning until you get it the way that you want, exactly. or you just rewrite it yourself manually. So, yeah. And from that, you can learn maybe things that you could have included in the original prompt to prevent those errors in the first place sometimes, but you know, there's all, there's always going to be something. All right, Damodar, thank, thank you for that presentation. We're going to have Josh present his user stories next and the prompt. Josh, welcome to the stage. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me, um, I'm going to try to share my screen. Um, Finally. Okay. Oh, what boy. does that mean, Coach Rachel? No. <laughs> oh, the square it's out? It's the square out is the it's square with screen. the arrow. Coined the term coined by Coach Mallory. And it's been this is not actually part of the mug. It's just a oh, no. that I put on, but it's useful. <laughs> um, I don't know why it's not um, allowing me to share my screen, but this is based on my company settings. I would try the window instead of the entire screen. The entire screen usually does not work. Okay. Um, window. Let's see. Ah, there we go. Perfect. Okay. So now you guys can see yourselves. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So this was essentially the process that I went through crafting the prompt generating and refining the user stories, drafting the acceptance criteria, and then the human review. So here, I just have like my process with the uh, screenshots on the left. All we um, see so is, is the um, air window. Uh, oh, oh, okay, so let me try it again. It looks like infinite air meet window. <laughs> oh no. Um, okay, let me share my- Unlock the tabs. Screen. It's better than in like the flows team sprint because you know, every time you click a flow or change every, it opens a new tab. Sometimes people come up and they have like 200 tabs open. Oh, it gets gosh. me a headache. Um, Janine, where are your cats today? Hiding because there's a plumber here. Oh. <laughs> plumber, guys, it's not going to let me share that window. Um, um, it, is it a Google Chrome or? It a is. I had downloaded it as a PowerPoint. Uh, I can probably, I created it in. Um, I created it in slides. Maybe I can make it. Okay. Um, maybe I can just so, open it here, actually. Okay. Yeah, cool. We'll, we'll give that a try. And if that doesn't work, then um, we'll, we'll bring up Momar and do some troubleshooting after that. But we'll, we'll okay. give it a go. Let's see here. Um, oh, no. Professional profile. Uh, did not save my. Here we go. There we go. Okay. You see it now? Okay, perfect. Okay. So, um, so these were the four steps, but I'll just jump straight into it. Um, so here you can see the prompt on the left that I used. Um, and so I just crafted like a simple direct prompt that um, using one of those other resources, I think from one of the other um, clicked classes, um, they talked about discussing the role uh, the request, context specifics, and then the expected format of the output. So I tried to really include all of that stuff. Um, and then obviously being specific about the invest framework and then the format for the user story that as a who I want, what, so that why. Um, so then next it generated this type of response. Um, so it gave me user stories. So this was the first user story that it gave from the curriculum department to, um, regarding enrollment tracking. So you can see like it did talk a lot about the its process. So yeah, the invest framework and it disclosed why um, it met each of those requirements. And then the user story obviously was form formulated in that, that way. So as a curriculum manager, I want to see real-time metrics of the course capacities and enrollment so that I can optimize class offerings and maximize revenue. Um, and then um, I asked it to uh, draft acceptance criteria 
um, for each of these stories using that same uh, or the given when then framework. Uh, and so you can see that it did that um, for each of those stories. And then on this last one, I kind of cross compared to show the human review back to the um, the interview transcript. Um, so here's the acceptance criteria up top that it gave me. And I tried to, these colors are matched. So as the curriculum manager, obviously, um, it said we, you know, in the transcript, it said we wanted to see the real time metrics. So you can see under then for that first point in the acceptance criteria that um, we're looking at real time metrics of the current course capacities and enrollments. And then um, the next criteria indicate the percentage of enrollment for each course and looking back at the transcript, how far to reaching capacity are we for classes that are in session and for any future courses and then just in red that that was their number one priority ultimately as a university. Um, so yeah, I am curious, I guess, while I have that, this space, let me stop sharing my screen. No, keep it up, keep it up. Oh, keep it up, okay, sorry. Yeah, let, let's uh, let's go back to your prompt yeah. and yeah. start there to, to dissect what, to dissect that a bit. Sure, okay. We see your air meet. Oh. Um, that is instead. Awesome. And if you can make that full screen, yes. go into presenter or, or slideshow. Interview. Awesome. Can you see the full thing? Yes, we can. All right. So okay. yeah, feedback, feedback on the prompt. We'll start there. Sure. As a business analyst for okay. So you put this into ChatGPT? Would you yes. Yeah, chat GPT. Mm -hmm. Abby, you want to take this one? Or? Um, I don't know. Do you have <laughs> Do you have anything to add here? I, I'm. Well, yeah, I can, I can. I mean, I can certainly certainly ask. I mean, I guess I'm kind of curious. Um, you know the. The, have you, I guess I would ask you this question is, have you used ChatGPT before? Have you done any work before with AI? What, like what's your history before using? Um, I haven't, I mean, I just kind of play around with it. So I have not used it like in an official way to, to craft anything like user stories okay. or whatever, like simple things like email responses. So for, or, okay. so, for, so first you pasted, so first you put this in and then did you like paste in the, the text of the transcript or did you upload the like the whole document of the transcript what was yeah, your next step from here i attached the document mm -hmm. okay and you just use chat gpt yeah like are you paying for chat gpt or so that you're allowed to um, attach the document because usually yes yeah i didn't know if that was a paid feature or not. Uh, yeah okay well i i wasn't sure um just because no, most people aren't paying for the ability to, I think you've got to be paying for it in order to attach a document to it. Um, uh, I gotcha. Okay. Okay. So I just wasn't sure unless you got it through work yeah. or something like that. No, I did. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the way this, um, like the way this reads, this is more like the instructions that we were given as opposed uh -huh. to a prompt, right? And so what we have mm -hmm. to do is we've got to kind of like, we've got to take that next layer down. So this is the, this is like Rachel saying to us, this is what we need to do, mm -hmm. but we need to actually kind of formulate this to tell the computer what to do or to tell chat GPT what to do, right? So we need to explain to it what we want it to do. So, and it's kind of like a first person conversation, but we've given it, and so it's not that it can't do it obviously because it's still managed to handle it. So we've got to think about how we want to get the best results possible out of our GPT because it's only as good as the prompts we give it. Mm -hmm. It's still going to, it's going to hobble by. It's, it's going to hobble by. And of course we didn't see because you're only showing us slides, you're not showing us the actual. I can like, also, screen. I can switch. Yeah. Over okay. Yeah. Like if you show actual. us the actual like back and forth, because again, remember it's chat GPT. Great. Okay. Sure. So this helps us too. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you, so you got, um, 4.0, I don't know, you're, you're clearly paying yeah. for it because you've got several GPTs that you've built. So you've been playing around with it for a bit, so it looks like. 
So this is where I would say, you know, this is your opportunity to really improve your, your prompt engineering skills. Yeah. So it's actually, and it's treating you like a third party, right? It's saying clients stated goal and priority. So this mm. is why it's having a conversation with you about the process. Mm. We don't want it to talk about, remember like kind of the meeting we said, we don't want to talk about the process. We don't want to have a conversation with that about the process. We just wanted to do the thing we wanted to do. Right? Like, yeah. That was, kind of, that was actually my question right? that I was wanting to ask was like, how do you get it to not talk about the process right. so much? Because that happens very frequently for me. So, right. Because <laughs> yeah, you need to learn how to give it the prompts you want it. Right. And you've given it okay. a prompt that says like, let's talk about the process. Okay. So we, we do want to kind of, you know, we want to really refine this. And so, you know, I would sort of challenge you to go back and, and like, you know, rather than me give you all the answers, I'm going to, I'm going to sort of challenge you to go back and, and this mm -hmm. might come up in some of these other ones. So we'll probably not dig too deep here instead move, move along. Right. So what we'll just mm -hmm. do is uh, say, reread this instruction to you mm -hmm. and then you need to extrapolate that in your human brain and give chat GPT an instruction of what it is you want it to do based on what it is you need to do. You're the business analyst, right? This as a business analyst for a consulting company, you will use it to have transcript. So that's you. <laughs> uh -huh. And so you need to then take that and say, okay, I'm going to create five user stories. So now you're going to say to chat GPT something like, um, analyze this the attached transcript and create five user stories in the following format and then but what else do you need to tell it you need to say do not create user stories that you don't find in this transcript use this transcript only you know and you can tell it the format um and you can say using best framework for the content or you can say create acceptance criteria and make sure it uses this format, but you don't need to have it go out and get you anything else. You, you can certainly, as um, Damodar did, you can certainly say, how would I create the best prompt to get this information from you if you wanted it to give you a more specific prompt, if it's gonna give you a detailed prompt. But um, mm -hmm. and, anyway, but like you've given it so much instruction that it's gonna spend a lot yeah. of time telling you how to be a best business analyst. You don't need that information. You are a business analyst. Right, so you just tell it what to do, and then ref you can refine the user story itself. Okay. I mean, and it seems like you were showing us in the in the user stories where it did. It seems like you were able to clarify that it did use that eventually, but yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I think so. I mean, I feel. I, I guess maybe. I, maybe this is where my thinking about it is like. Um, confused. I feel like what what you're saying that I should do, I feel like is what I did, but I don't, I'm, so I'm guess I'm curious about what language you would change to, to get that, to get the appropriate result, I guess. Or, so are you saying like, I shouldn't have included this type of information? When, when the long you your screen. Mom, it, it sounds like Janine, what you're saying okay. is, you told the GPT what you have to do instead of you telling the GPT what you want it to do. Is that right? Like you, right. So you gave the GPT the instruction that was to you, as opposed to mm -hmm. you extrapolating the next level down of instruction and sort of, cause you're the business analyst, not the GPT. Mm -hmm. um, so, so you need to say, you might need to say to the GPT, act like a business analyst or like as a business analyst, you know, we're going to, if we're going to evaluate this transcript and write some user stories and we're going to use the following format as a, mm -hmm. opposed to tell me how, how to do this as a business analyst, which is kind of the instructions it took from the instructions you posted just because of the way mm. the instructions were written because you posted the instructions to you. Mm -hmm. right. right. Instead of instead of giving it the instructions that says you are a business analyst, do this thing. It it sort of took the instructions that the way they were written and, and took it to mean like explain to me how to do this. 
and you've got to be really you just have to be really specific about it and say i don't i don't want to i don't want to understand the process i understand the process i'm telling you the process and this is what you're going to follow it sort of gotcha. took it to mean like you wanted to and it, you wanted the description of the process mm. okay yeah. thank you uh, Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Josh. Uh, Thanks, let's Josh. move on for time's sake. Looks like that's a really good golden nugget there. Look at your output. If you don't like it, go back and find out why you didn't get what you wanted. Uh, Momar, you are up next and you're currently muted, but you can unmute and share your screen. And it looks like we've got Laura and Jahida after that. So let's do speed presentations and feedback so we can we can try and get everybody in. Okay. Hi, everyone. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just is I'm just gonna go through our conversation and maybe can give you some feedback. Um, so uh, first, what I did is that I attached the document uh, that you gave us, and then my initial prompt was this: You are a Salesforce business analyst. Here is the transcript of a stakeholder interview. Give me the pain points, the business processes, the KPIs and the metrics, the current state, the desired future state, and any relevant details, which uh, ChatGPT gave me, uh, which was uh, acceptable because it uh, matched uh, what was said during the interview. And then the second point was this. Now, taking this into account, craft quality user stories that meet the invest criteria and follow the format has as a who, I want what, so that why then draft accepted criteria for each user story. And then I gave a brief explanation based on the task you gave us. Okay. Uh, and it gave me uh, these user stories. And I noticed two problems with these uh, user stories. First, uh, each user story had two um, acceptance criteria. Uh, first of all, is that something that's, uh, that happens in real life? Can a user story have multiple acceptance criteria? I'm sorry, what was the question? Can you repeat? Yeah, can. Repeat the question. He, he yeah. asked if if a user story can have multiple acceptance criteria, and the answer is it can have it can it can have multiple acceptance criteria. There is no okay. limit. There's there's no rule about how many acceptance criteria a user story can have. Okay. And the second problem I noticed is that uh, even though I gave him uh, instruction on uh, to be mm -hmm. uh, general. Uh, it kind of delves into uh, solution uh, territory uh, because it's uh, it's way too detailed sometimes. It talks about Salesforce and solutions and stuff. So what yeah. I did is that I uh, I like to to talk to ChatGPT as a person. So I, what I did is that I work. I think your acceptance criteria are delving into solution territory. Can you make them more general? And then it changed it to make it more general. For example. Um, Maybe we can take this one in this marketing campaigns. As a marketing manager, I want targeted campaign tools in Salesforce so that I can effectively upsell courses and fill low enrollment classes. But there, the problem is that there is still two uh, acceptance criteria. So what I well, did, I, I wouldn't call. Yeah, I don't think two is the problem. Okay. Okay. So um, initially, I thought it was a problem. So I asked him to um, to just do one acceptance criteria. And then um, here's the result. As a sales analyst, I want automated reporting of key enrollment metrics so that I can quickly assess course performance and make that a given decision. Acceptance criteria. Given the sales analyst is on the dashboard, the Salesforce dashboard, when they access the enrollment report, then the report should include quality metrics on course performance, um, which I think is still a bit uh, detailed. I but think that's less good. I'd have I'd have to look at the other ones to know if, but I don't I wouldn't I don't think that's very good. Uh, is the, uh, here are the result from the from the first uh, prompt. Well, I mean, I like your reasoning, but like this is you know you're taking like the long route. So I think the best thing to do is yeah yeah I like what you're doing and you're kind of figuring it out. But that's and that's the whole point. We need to get to the point where you refine it, you know, and and. A lot of people do this through like custom GPTs and stuff like that, where you're, it can analyze um, more directly, right? Instead of having to keep saying, oh, now go back and do this. Now go back and, you know. Um, so I don't know, Janine, do you have anything to add to that? I just, 
I want my well, way to respond. Yeah, and I, and I think the strategy of refinement, I agree with you, Gabby. Like, refining is good if, you're, if it's not meeting your criteria. I think mm-hmm. where you're, you know, where you might need to expand a little bit on your own experience and sort of what it means to do, like, acceptance criteria and what is and isn't acceptable. Um, there's no there's no harm in having there be multiple acceptance criteria. They've got to be correct. Um, so, like some of these user stories are okay and some of them are not okay. Um, some of these acceptance criteria are just fine. Some of them not so much. Um, so, but there's no hard and fast rule about how many acceptance criteria there should be. So that's not really a good rule to, to limit it by. Um, making it more general doesn't make it a better acceptance criteria, but you're right that taking a solution out of it, like it shouldn't, acceptance criteria shouldn't be a solution. Mm-hmm but the opposite of solution isn't general, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's where you've got to be a little bit careful. It's got to be better acceptance criteria, but not generalization. Okay. So you've got to be, you've got to understand a little bit better about what an acceptance criteria is. But again, the, the refinement process is a good, is a good strategy. Okay. Uh, but another um, question, um, if, uh, Rachel, uh, if yeah, no, sorry, sorry, Momar. If you want to put your question in the chat, we can try to yeah. get to it. But for time's sake, um, we're, we're going to move on to the next to the next presenter on that one. Uh, but thank yeah. you for your presentation. Yeah, thank you. All right, Laura, go ahead, and Hello. then yeah, Momar, go ahead and, and and drop your question in the chat. We'll see if we can get you Hello. an answer. Hello, Hi, Laura. Hello. Well, what I did was uh, using ChatGPT as a colleague. No, it's the way okay. I use it generally to improve something or to give me a feedback. So what I did, I, I cannot use the the long version because I don't pay Gemini. I use Gemini. So mm-hmm. I use the interview notes. I have several often answers like, I don't have the information to give you that. So I keep on asking. Uh, I end up asking Gemini to write a user story, whatever. So it did. And after that, it was like kind of reacted and started to do what I wanted. So my prompts are very simple. Write one user story as an expert business analyst with information given to these notes. And the notes were the the notes of the interview. So the first one was data-driven enrollment management and actual insights. It was like, "Mm, I didn't like it. It's, I didn't like it. So I ask again, what other user story can you write with information given? This was kind of uh, simpler, but I like it better than the first one. As a market manager, I can see reports. And after the certain criteria, this time it gave me additional notes. And from the very beginning, I wanted uh, that they write a user story as Davin as as the the person, no, as Davin Grohl or as uh, director of financial director, I don't remember the title. Okay, director director of analytics. So I start asking and not receiving what I wanted until he did it or he did it or she did it. I don't know. <laughs> as an expert business analyst, write Davin user stories as director of analytics in us with the information given in these interview notes. Well, it was like repetitive, but it was the way. I got at least the answer I thought I wanted, but I'm not quite convinced, but at least I have an answer. So it gave me this. I want improved reporting and data visualization visualization capabilities within Salesforce so that I can provide actional insight. And then the acceptance acceptance criteria, pardon, pardon. I'm kind of, it's not my birthday. The acceptance criteria was separated by as users, curriculum department, marketing team, finance department. And the thing is, and after that, sorry, it gave me minimum viable product, success criteria, and additional notes. And I think I didn't have the time to, but I could, if I had, I could have worked on this because I think the acceptance criteria is, uh, I wouldn't say too big, but I think it could be useful for different user stories, not just in one to have all these acceptance criteria, but I might be wrong. And here I am, I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
First of all, can I start out by saying that I love how you presented it, this. It's very beautiful. I like how um, it's very clean and easy to, to understand. So I like that you put the prompt at the top and um, everything like that. Okay. Um, Coach Janine, do you have anything to to add to the to the user story? Like, do you like that user story? Which one? The one that <laughs> we have right here. For the one that we're looking at right here. Uh huh. For is it Devin Grohl? Yes, yeah, so this, this is the one I wanted. I don't think I I would separate it in several, but you tell me if you can have so multiple. I understand that you have you can have acceptance criteria that are multiple, but within the subject, I would say, I think this covers too too many subjects. It says covers issues. Is sorry, use for users, curriculum department, marketing team, financial. Well, here's department. the thing about it. If this is if this is your user story as a director of analytics at ASU, your acceptance criteria is only for your director of analytics at ASU. The only exactly. person who has to accept it's, this user story is the director of analytics at ASU. But here's exactly. the other thing. There's a lot of problems with this user story. Yes, First of exactly. all, the director of analytics at ASU is a single person. Mm -hmm. So I would never write a user story based on a single person. I might say um, as, an, as an analytics team member, mm -hmm. um, you know, as a, as a member of the analytics department, because the director mm -hmm. of analytics is one person. So that's never a good persona. Because remember, when we do our user stories, it's based on the user experience, and it's never for a single person. It really is meant to be for people mm -hmm. or people who have an experience. And so I don't see any one of these acceptance criteria that are targeted at people who do analysis of data mm -hmm. at ASU. So uh, it's so I, I would have thrown the I, I I couldn't even accept this user story as it is, mm -hmm. but if I was going to rewrite it and but this I don't know. If, we don't want to go down the path. So this isn't a good user story for for a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. So I would go back to my prompt and I'd say, why is this not a good user story? Right. This is where I go back and say, I need to refine my prompt in such a way that I'm getting the information I want. Right. So I need to say, I well, oh, I see what. what yeah. As, because a, as a director, prompt, it's right. in the prompt. Like, yeah. Right. So here's mm -hmm. so here's the thing. If, if I look at did you use the same prompt for all your stories? Okay. No. Did you use no, no. a separate prompt for each? Yes. I, the first one it was write one user okay. stories as a business analyst with the information. I, I, I wanted to see what Gemini answered. So he answered with okay. this user story. And then, After that, I asked, and then the next can one? you write another one with the okay. same information? And they did. And then what was Marketing the next manager. Prompt? And no, then the I wanted the one, I, I, I didn't know what you said. I, don't, I wanted the one for director right. of analytics because I thought that it was, a, it was a user that it might be interesting to know what would be that a director needs to see Got it. and what would be the acceptance criteria. I, no? Okay, got a little too specific on, on this one. Okay, okay. Right. I th yeah. So I think we're, we're again, we're, what we're trying to get at is, you know, I think we've got, you know, there, there's sort of, there's two parts to this challenge, right? There's the mm -hmm. understanding user stories and acceptance criteria, but there's also understanding how to write the prompt in such a way that gets us user stories. And so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, user stories, we, as an expert business analyst, right? You, so you mm -hmm. that like your first prompt in some ways captures that a, a lot better. It's a little bit more general. I'm an expert business analyst. I, so I want the voice of an expert business analyst and I want to write that story like that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the, that's the perspective I want to take. Mm -hmm. But now I want to analyze this data and I want to write my user stories from the perspective of an expert business analyst. You're looking at this data and I want to create some user stories. But instead of limiting it to just one, because how do I know? I mean, that's a lot of data to just pick one out of. Um, you could say write five. Really, if I'm being honest, I would say write me some user stories. Mm -hmm. And then I, the human, would pick my top five that I think were the best ones that I would mm -hmm. present here. Yeah. That's a hint to everybody if, every, yeah. if you do one of these again. Yeah. Why yeah. limit it? Right? Okay. Like, let it, let it write you a bunch. And then pick the five that you think are good. Or I would say... Now looking at these user stories, Mr. GPT, what do you think are the, the 
the five most important ones based on your analysis, based on the pain points you've read, what do you think are the top five most important or, or key ones? Mm -hmm. Like, let the analysis take you through and, and pick out the five that you think are the most important ones. The thing is, I started that like that, but the answer was I don't have the, enough information to do that. That is but why it I go back to one. And when but I started, but it does, one, but it it does, does have that. It, but it does have that information. It does have yeah. that information to do that because it's in the it's in the transcript. Yes, right. It does. So you have to remind it. That it does, but we'll refer, you know, if you don't think you have that information, Mr. GPT. Refer to the transcript that I provided you because all the information you need is right here. But I was stuck there, so I start to ask him different questions until like it reacted and it started to give me answers. But it was a great exercise to do, in fact. Okay. Very good. <laughs> Very interesting. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Laura. I appreciate you. All right. Jahida, you are up next. This will be our last presentation for the day. You're currently muted, but you can unmute and share your screen. And while Jahida brings that up, I would love to hear from all of you in the chat what your big takeaway is, if you have a golden nugget uh, that, that you would like to share. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Can you see my screen? Yes. We can. Okay. Awesome. So I have me... I have a little bit of chat GPT or um, AI experience um, okay. because I, I, I'm taking a course now for how to use AI responsibly. So through two of five modules. Um, but um, here is what I uh, put into, uh, here's the output. Do you need to see the output or the input? Kind of want to see the input first, okay. right? Let's see how you prompted and then let me share a different screen. Or we can, or I mean, we can start this way and then go to the, you know, it helps us see both, but either way, whichever works for you. I want to see. I, I can just, I can just share the other screen. Okay. So I started off with um, just. Okay. trying to upload, trying to upload the, um, the transcript. So I said, hello. I use, I like to, before, before I would like to conversate with, uh, the AI. Now I know not to really, and now I don't really have to do that. Right. I'm trying to train it like just to be friendly and all of that. Um, so, um, so I started as a responsible Salesforce business analyst specializing in AI. I was hired by Arizona State University. I want to generate user stories so that ASU can implement Salesforce to manage course enrollment. And I took that specifically from the task instructions. And then I let it know that I was going to upload 21 pages of transcript to analyze. Um, I had some trouble uploading this. I even asked ChatGPT how to upload 21 pages, and and it um, and it prompted me to just upload here. But I I was not able to do that uh, successfully because I kept getting an error uh, message that said the uh, like it was too much, like too long, like too much information basically. So I had to upload the file. So I did that. And I said, please analyze this transcript. And then I started getting a bunch of um, responses. I got a bunch of them. And then as I was listening into my colleagues, I, I uh, asked ChatGPT to, um, to avoid user stories of processes and to focus more on just five user stories based on the role of an enrollment manager and the role of a finance of the finance uh, roles of the finance department. So and for time's then, sake, because we've got about two minutes left, um, if you yes. want to share your biggest takeaway and if you've got a specific question. Oh, um, I guess. Um, so my biggest takeaway was using this uh, um, at a higher level of of um, like uh, like position instead of just having it write an email for me. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, 
And then my biggest question is, uh, what are the key things to keep in mind when in this position as business analyst um, for, for using AI and user stories? Um, well, like biggest res like responsibilities, I guess. Like uh, to use it responsibly. Okay, how to use GPT responsibly as a business analyst? Yes. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. All right. Yeah, Coach Janine, well, Coach Janine is like the head BA here, so I just wanted to see what if she had anything to add to that. I think using AI responsibly, I'm glad that you included that in the prompt and that you're obviously studying it, which is wonderful, um, that you're actually taking the time to, to learn how, how to use it responsibly. Um, I don't know in the context of specifically as a BA, but I think, you know, of course, um, being careful that you're not sharing private data, you know, like one of those would be like the key ones. If you're using it for work, just make sure that you're using whatever's been um, authorized by your company. I know that we use it where I work and we have authorized, um, like we were allowed, you know, we can use open AI or chat GPT, um, and Gem Gemini isn't unless we're using vertex. So there's things like that. Just making sure that you're not sharing data unintentionally. Um, Janine, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, yeah, I can't remember the, what, what was the other part of the question? How to use AI responsibly as a business analyst. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think that covers it. I think that's really a good one, Gabby, to call out, especially like, I know I've used it for projects, but I'll make sure we strip out any names, you know, definitely full names. Sometimes we'll go down to like initials. We'll take out any company names. Um, if we, yeah. if we have yeah, to use, I, I, sure. we have to use anything personal. external, yeah, if we yeah. have to use something external, um, or even if I'm, even when I'm using it to like write resume or, um, my own personal stuff, it's like, I'll just pr paste in like just the bullet points and I'll do it. It might take me longer, but I'll just put in a little bit at a time. That's got nothing personal or private. Um, I mean, obviously it knows who I am cause I logged in, but, um, I really try to keep anything personal and private out of it. Um, and I'll just say, like, I have to write an email just, and I don't put any names. And then I, I put the names in when I rewrite it. So I don't even say, well, like, if I'm applying to a company and I'm writing a cover letter, I don't even say what company I'm applying to. I just put that information in later. Um, it's easy enough to do. So I think just Thank keeping you. it, keeping it simple and keeping it as private as you can until you have your own private information. So, awesome. Okay. It's the best way. Sounds like your, uh, your laundry is done. <laughs> um, something, yeah. Someone's alarm. Awesome. Yeah, well, thank you for bringing that up. That's definitely an important topic to, to cover and think about when, when we're writing this. So appreciate that uh, from, from you. And I will now start sharing my screen again because everyone, the time has come. We are wrapping up this AI assisted user story skills challenge. We do have another one tomorrow though on refining user stories. So if you feel like you're not complete on user stories slash you need refinement, definitely uh, come to that one as well. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one to come to. I think it'd be some really good deep diving in the user story stuff. Yeah, definitely. This one, this one, we covered some great stuff with prompts and really great golden nuggets from Gabby and Janine. So thank you both for your insights and to everybody who participated, so many of our presenters and, and, and being in the chat. So uh, Parth says, the session oh. has ended. No, it was getting really yeah. interesting. <laughs> yes, well, we're we're still here. So we'll see, we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, but drop some emojis and thanks to our coaches, and we will see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.